you know, I guess that's cool and, and whatever. Um, but for, for me, the, the idea of, you know, rock raiders being these space miners lost in space, they're literally in another galaxy. They've, their ship has been sucked up and, and spat out into a foreign galaxy. They're on this uncharted planet. Who knows what's waiting for them? That, that to me is just like dripping with intrigue. That is, that's really cool. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot more mystery and space for story in that one. That's yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. And that, that, that's, that's kind of the big difference between the two for me. Uh, while I like both of their toys well enough, Rock Raiders just has a, that depth to it that um, I, I don't think Power Miners has. Hello everyone and welcome to T-Fall Talk, the podcast where we shine a light on awesome teen fans in the LEGO community doing amazing things and maybe the occasional a full too. I'm Doodlebricks, aka Kavi, and today we're going to be hanging out with Slugger, otherwise known as RR Slugger. How are you doing, man? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on, uh, even though it's been a long time since I was a teenage fan of Lego. <laughs> <laughs> of course, no, but that's the fun of it. We get to hear your retrospective now. Not the Rock Raiders retrospective, but retrospective in general. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> All right. So I'd say let's just hop into the first question, which is who is RR Slugger and what do you do in the Lego world? Hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah. Introspective question. <laughs> um, so RR Slugger is, is obviously the name of the, the uh, channel and the internet little character. Um, I, I, I kind of I treat it like it's, it's like Jim Henson and Kermit the Frog. So RR Slugger is the Kermit the Frog sort of idea. It's not necessarily supposed to be exactly me one-to-one. I feel like uh, outside of RR Slugger, I live a very different life. Um, but Slugger is a great way to, you know, communicate um, different thoughts and ideas uh, in the Lego space. So I, I think in general, what, what I like to do with Lego and and uh, with regards to RR Slugger is create videos that talk about, you know, the, the older themes uh, that uh, a lot of which I didn't have growing up. So as an adult, going back and being able to buy these sets and uh, talk about them and really experience them for the first time, it's been a lot of fun. It's a, it's a new way to play with the toy for me. I see. That's really cool. It's like, like you said, yeah, like getting to go back and, spe- and like experience that all over again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think, I think there's definitely a, a bit of a misconception um, for folks coming to the to, to the channel and they see me talk about, I don't know, Ice Planet or, or um, any any of these old themes, like, like uh, Time Cruisers, uh, Galador even. And all of these themes are um, sets that I got as an adult. They're, they're not sets that I had as a kid. Oh. And I think I think the general assumption is that I'm just talking about the sets I grew up with. But in reality, I'm, I'm really not. <laughs> a lot of the sets I grew up with were themes like uh, Lego Island Extreme Stunts, uh, Dino Attack, you know, like I had I had sets like those yeah. when I was young. Some of the but, later themes. Exactly, yeah, but but um, even as a kid and as a, as a teenage fan of Lego too, I was always uh, gravitating towards the older sets. I would go to thrift stores and try to find, you know, old Adventurers sets, old Ice Planet sets, that sort of stuff. So that's where my eye was always focused, even though those aren't the ones that I, I grew up with. I see. So you always had kind of a bit of an affinity for like the slightly more retro sets and all that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and I don't know why why it is, but it, it is born out of preference, you know. Um, it, it's something I talked about a, a little bit in the uh, the Great Lego Plague of two thousand two, where I'm talking about the curved pieces and they, as they start to be introduced into the Lego um, Lego scene. I, I, um, that it's just an aesthetic that doesn't appeal to me as much. I kind of like my sets to be blocky and chunky, even though a lot of the ones I had growing up had a lot of these curved elements in them. Yeah, I see what you're saying. It's definitely like, it's the more classic, like original Lego feel. Like the, the Lego that you think about, like when you just say Lego to anybody and it's just like, oh, the blocky structures. Yeah. 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 I see. That's really cool though. And I think you like saying that you provide a very interesting perspective, which is an adult who didn't grow up with all of these retro sets, but is now going back and appreciating them. It's like a little, a little bit of both. It's really interesting. 
Yeah, yeah, I think it is kind of a unique, uh, a unique situation to be on because I, I find um, I, I don't know if we're gonna, you know, I guess we'll just talk talk about nostalgia here yeah. uh, for a second. It, it's it's something that um, kind of throw. It, it's a term that gets thrown around a lot, and I notice it in the comment section of my videos quite frequently. Whenever I'm talking about an old series that I really like, maybe compared to a more modern series that I don't like as much, and uh, that as an example, you know, what well, we can take the power miners versus rock raiders sort of discussion there yeah. and uh it, it's definitely one where i i get uh i, I don't want to say accused but uh folks will definitely chime in and say well you just like the rock raiders because you're nostalgic for it right and um it, it, it it's kind of one of those arguments that i see online frequently enough that it's uh it, it's become bothersome to me kind of a pet peeve where this idea of accusing someone of only liking a thing because they're nostalgic for it, where and not seeing the irony in that argument, where you know th- these are the same folks that'll talk about power miners that they grew up with and say <laughs> power miners is a lot better, you know, than yeah. rock raiders, right? And the only reason you like rock raiders is because you're nostalgic for it. <laughs> exactly. It, it, it's it's an argument that is. Uh, it's it's baseless and it's founded on assumption and I I, um, I really grind my gears against it because I like I said I didn't grow up with a lot of the sets I talk about on the channel and I think folks just assume that it did like they say you're nostalgic for Galador and I, I I tell them I never I never had Galador growing up this is brand new to me as an adult so it, it's it's not nostalgia it's preference you know maybe maybe there yes. is like the the tinge of growing up with something that that can influence influence your opinion i'm not saying that's not that's not what's what uh, can be a part of that but it's not everything it's not the whole story and i think they try to use it as a catch-all just this idea that nostalgia is the only reason someone would enjoy the first few years of bionicle that sort of thing right <laughs> just yeah. as another example <laughs> Exactly. No, I get what you're saying there. It kind of seems more like a my nostalgia versus yours kind of thing than looking at it mm-hmm. from a bit of a different perspective. But yeah, I mean, like, I guess, like, like, like you said, how maybe still growing up around something can have a small effect on things. Like, I like to call that secondhand nostalgia. Like, I have a little bit of that <laughs> for, like, Bionicle, because I was born in 2005. So by the time I was old enough to kind of understand it, it was already gone. But I do remember seeing kids, like, playing with that when I was little and being like, that's the big kid Lego. I'm going to play right. that one day. So like <laughs> that definitely exists, but still, once again, it's not like the end all be all kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting to me. Um, because I, I, I guess like as I've, as I've gotten older, it's, it's hard to accept that they kept making human beings after the year 2000, you know, <laughs> yeah. it happens. Yeah. <laughs> I get you. I have that for anybody born like after 2012, 11, maybe. I'm like, wait, they still kept producing them? <laughs> uh, like people born in 2015, I'm like, excuse me, what? No, nobody was born I, then. What I know, about? I know. Yeah. That's when Ninjago Possession came out. Everybody was born then. <laughs> uh, using Lego as a way to like indicate time is like my favorite thing. That's how I do it with like everything. Yeah, yeah, that, that's great. <laughs> um, like, I, I'm definitely one of those folks where, you know, the the majority of my collection is old gray <laughs> Lego. And the, I very distinctly remember, I remember when Le- Lego introduced the new colors and, and just being, oh, this is interesting. None of these colors are compatible with my old, you know, my sets. You oh, know? <laughs> man, that's wild. Yeah, that must be really annoying. Like, you get used to the color palette and it's like, here's the same color, but different. Absolutely, absolutely. So a lot of that, uh, a lot of that um, stuff that went on from 2004 to 2006 when they were revamping the the color scheme um, or the color palette, I should say, uh, that it's a major friction point I find. And I think folks that are around my age um, largely jumped off the Lego bandwagon around that time mm-hmm. because there were so many new molds being introduced, so many new colors that weren't compatible. It was the perfect kind of time to to detach yourself from from lego which is largely what happened in my case um even though i'm sure that wasn't the company's intention at the time but they were just trying to course correct and you know get get out of the hole that they had dug themselves into absolutely no i see what you're saying there any big change like that to something people are used to is always going to like i guess push a lot of them away regardless of if it's good or not and then 
maybe some of them will come back like you did, and then you know new people like me will come into it or something like mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, you definitely make an interesting point there. Now we're definitely going to touch more on like that kind of era of Lego a little bit later. But next, sure. I want to ask, how and when did you get into Lego? Um, it, if I recall correctly, I think I was about five years old um, at the time, and it, it was just um, it was a Christmas present, I think, or maybe a birthday gift, oh. and it was a small set from the Lego Western theme uh, called Frontier Patrol. Just had three little minifigures uh, riding a horse. There was like a bush. There were just cavalry soldiers um, in, in that theme. And I remember being so blown away that I had to build the toy myself. You know, <laughs> that was just, <laughs> it was mind blowing at the time. <laughs> yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah, it, it didn't, I don't think, I don't think it was a fast obsession or anything like that. I think it took a few years to really get into Lego. But once I got into it, I was, I was really into it. And it was basically every, every single gift under the Christmas tree, you know, had that, <laughs> that satisfying jingle to it, right? Yeah, so. <laughs> absolutely. It was kind of like a seed that was planted in your head that kind of slowly grew over time. And then here we yeah. are now. Yeah, yeah, no kidding. Yeah, this is the, the tree that grew from that. <laughs> exactly. Literally, it came from under a Christmas tree. It just worked perfectly. <laughs> yeah. I- I'm curious, um, what-, what was your first experience with Lego? That's a great question. Um, I don't know, if I'm being honest. I literally don't remember a time not having Lego because I think my mom was always very into me having, like, more creative type toys. Like, she didn't let me have any of, you know, like, the Nerf guns or anything like that, which I get. Mm-hmm. And she more wanted to... Yeah, she she more gave me more like wholesome toys and things like that. And she was big on the creativity art stuff. So I don't know. I think she started buying me lots of secondhand Lego off of eBay just to kind of build a small collection. And I had Duplo when I was little. But honestly, I have no idea when that started. Like, I cannot remember a time not having it around me at some point. That's cool. That's cool. Definitely. And, and, and- yeah, and honestly, um, when when I did a little video talking about my first Lego set, uh, and I asked the question, you know, to the, I posed the question to the comment section, saying, "What was your first Lego set?" Um, a lot of folks had a very similar story as well, really? where they just couldn't they couldn't imagine a time before Lego um, in yeah. their life. So it, it's cool. It's really neat. Yeah, it's definitely an, uh, like a an interesting phenomenon, I guess, if you could call it that. It's mm-hmm. funny, that's for sure. I do remember, though, early on, like, I wasn't into normal system Lego. I was, you know, more into Duplo, and I always called, like, system bricks, like, little Lego, and it took me forever (laughs) to actually get into them. And then I was like, oh, man, this is cool. I then ended up giving away all my Duplo, which I regret now because I realize I can use it for mocks. But that's that's a story mm, for another time. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, Duplo is honestly pretty hard to come by. Um, yeah. Just given that uh, it, you know it didn't like they didn't produce as much of it, and the the used sets that you get, you have to remember who the clientele is for for you know Duplo. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So they're they're usually in pretty rough shape. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Definitely. No. But yeah, so if anybody here like has kids who's listening and, you know, they they look like they're going to be future Lego fans, don't let them get rid of their Duplo because they will regret it one day. Mm -hmm, Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. hundred percent. All right. And how did you join the online Lego community then? Um, that's, that's interesting. Yeah, I, I was more or less kind of an auxiliary member to an old, um, Rock Raiders forum, um, way back way back when um in in gosh that would have been in my teenage years too actually yeah okay long time ago um and that was just kind of you know a a small community back when communities were largely built on forums like internet forums where it, it was almost like communicating over email that's that's the kind of idea um and the benefit of those is that uh with forums you can always go back and search much more easily and, and there's kind of like a recorded history to it whereas right. the the shift over to discord and messenger and all these new new um, instant communication methods um, they, they don't leave a lasting impact on the internet as a whole so I find when even to this day when I'm looking up uh, answers to problems like I'm having a problem with with cubase or something as an example like my, my audio software I'll, I'll look up the forums and I find that I'm looking at posts from you know 2010 2006 oh. you know 
2005 because like that, that's when that stuff was recorded that's when like it was written down nowadays all that stuff is done through live chat with customer support or you know discord uh, yeah. messengers and you can't search it anymore so there, there's this there's going to be this uh dark age basically to the internet uh, when, yeah. when we look back at it you know in 20 years there's going to be this period of time where all this information is just gone <laughs> um so i'm not looking forward to that but it, you know it's the reality of it um it's sorry true. i kind of deviated from the question no there, worries <laughs> the podcast trust me the podcast is all about like tangents and stuff you're good <laughs> <laughs> that's fair that's fair um so i guess the the more poignant answer would be that uh manic miners the the fan remake game of uh, rock raiders the original game uh that discord community is probably where i first you know cut my teeth as rr slugger and um really got into it in in a i think that was about 2019 is when i first joined that server so um yeah that's that's about when i kind of reconnected with lego and the online community as it is uh, as it exists today okay i see and then how did that translate over into creating a whole youtube channel um I, i think i'd always kind of wanted to do you know, a YouTube channel or, or make videos. I'd always been really um, interested in that sort of uh, stuff as a kid. But uh, when I was young, the technology wasn't really there to, to do it. I, at least I didn't have any programs that could do it all that well. I was trying to make movies with Windows Movie Maker back in oh, <laughs> 2001, <laughs> that sort of stuff. And uh, I was trying to do stop motion animation and the fastest it could make a, a frame was like a full second or something like that. So it, it, was, it was just, you know, bad, <laughs> bad experience with that. Um, I grew, grew up in a small town and um, our schools didn't have you know, powerful software or anything like that. Um, I so I just never had the means to do any of this sort of stuff. And it wasn't until, you know, much later in life that the technology kind of caught up on the consumer level. And uh, I was able to just, you know, find a program that worked for me being, uh, in this case, DaVinci Resolve. Yeah. And uh, get get a camera that, that worked for me. And uh, yeah, I just did it all myself at the, at the end of the day. I, I don't have any formal training in, in photography or, you know, uh, video software or anything like that. It's just another one of those things that I just kind of had to teach myself how to do. I see. So it was a very natural progression then since you'd kind of been wanting to do this for a while, but just weren't able to due to where technology was at for people at the time. Yeah, in a way, the YouTube channel is a childhood dream being realized, even though I was having this dream before YouTube was a thing, right? So <laughs> Yeah. Oh, my God. That's right. That's really cool. That That's really cool, honestly. Like, it's just kind of was such like a natural progression, I guess. And like being able to like, like, because once again, I've mostly grown up with this stuff for the most part. The only time I don't remember it being very prevalent was like when I was really young, when people still use Blackberries. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's just that must be so cool to like finally be given the tools to execute things you've wanted to for so long. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. It, it was um, a big, big uh, development, I'd say, in, in my life, which is which is great. Definitely. All right. Let's see. And for people who don't know you, where are you most prevalent on the online community? I, I think YouTube's probably the best place to to find me. Um, obviously I'm on discord every day, you know, answering messages. Um, I, I, I sometimes call it uh, notification whack-a-mole, you know, I'm just trying to <laughs> try to get yeah. through, you know, all the, di- all the different pings. Right. So, um, I, th- I think, um, like, like, it, it, it's something it's something Getty Lee talks about. He, he's a he's a bass player in a Canadian band called Rush, uh, who I who I really enjoy. I got, got a chance to meet him on his on his book tour a while back. Nice. But um, it, it's something he talks about saying that you know he's a he's a famous musician. He tours the world, does all this thing, uh, does all this stuff. And um, if he if he gets stopped by a fan who wants to talk, he says, you know what, I've got the time. I've got the time to to sit down and and you know talk talk to a fan. And I kind of feel the same way to where you know people reach out to me uh, pretty much on a daily basis uh, asking me questions or just saying they like the videos that sort of thing and I, and I really do feel like you know it's the least I can do to to, to communicate with them you know to fire a message back and say thank you and uh, all this sort of stuff so uh, if you do want to reach out to me uh, to anyone listening yeah you certainly can and I, I will try to get back to you as soon as I can the, the only thing that I 
uh, ask for, and and I can really see the, uh, <laughs> I don't, I don't want to say the generational divide, but I can definitely tell online the people who didn't grow up communicating over email <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and the people who communicated over instant messaging, because I grew up over email. So I treat messages like emails. I'll get to it when I get to it, you know, <laughs> and it's, it's kind of one of those things. Whereas a, a lot of folks have been, um, they, they'll send me a message and then they'll send me another message and, and another one and they'll, they'll say, yeah. I, I, I got nervous when you didn't respond to me, you know, like right away. <laughs> I get you. <laughs> that is a very funny, like kind of general generational divide thing now you mention it. And it, it's very true as well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It, it, it's a new concept that we have this instant access to each other's life, you know, yeah. <laughs> over the internet. And uh, yeah, it, it, it's interesting how it, how it shapes the way we communicate online. It really is. And honestly, like, I do feel like there is something kind of special about just like the slight weight when it comes to something like an email or just something that's like a forum or not an instant message, where it's not like you have to wait weeks for like a letter to get to you necessarily. (laughs) But it's like just a little bit, like maybe maybe a few hours, maybe a day or something. But like, there's just kind of something special to that as well. Yeah, and honestly, that, that that's a it's a good point to to say that you know to compare it to mailing letters or you know the telegrams or faxes and stuff like that because before my time there there was even slower methods of communication right it's just <laughs> yeah. been getting faster and faster <laughs> as as we go. It has, and then with flipping like Neuralink stuff coming soon, you're just gonna be able to have a thought and boom, it's in <laughs> someone's head. Get out of my head! <laughs> I won't have to make videos anymore. I can just <laughs> communicate with, telepathically to people. It'll oh be great. My God, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right? I, I remember hearing something somewhere that was like, you know, imagine you can like watch videos in your head or something, but then imagine like you get ads for your thoughts. So like, <laughs> we interrupt this thought to present to you whatever. I don't know. But like, yep, yep, yep. <laughs> oh, man. All right, let's see. Let me go into the next question. Okay, so I'm just going to ask a question here that I think many people probably wonder when they first come across your channel, which is, what does the RR in your name stand for? And does it stand for (laughs) Rock Raiders? (laughs) (laughs) Um, Truth be told, uh, uh, when uh, Brett and I, Brett Brett being the artist who designed uh, Slugger, um, when we we started the channel... um, we came up with, with the idea, okay, well, it's got to be a slimy slug from Rock Raiders. That, that was I- immediately, like, we're, we thought, okay, it has to be a slimy slug uh, as the mascot or whatever for the channel. And uh, he went to went to work on the, the design of the character, and I went to work on choosing the name, basically. Um, so I thought, you know, okay, Slugger, that, that, that works. But um, th- there might be, you know, other people named Slugger. Maybe there needs to be something to differentiate this character a little bit more. And so I was kind of inspired by the, like, the P.T. Barnum sort of, um, like, traveling sideshow sort of idea. This idea of, like, a circus kind of coming to town. Um, And so I I wanted to do a couple of initials at the start. And so, you know, P.T. Barnum, so R.R. Slugger. Um, And and it it just kind of rolled off the tongue nicely. Uh, And originally I wanted to start the video with, with a big you know, lambasting sort of um, RR Sluggers, Rock Raiders retrospective or whatever, you know, something like that. And uh, honestly, that that circus motif never quite made it into the final product, probably for ah. the better. But um, RR was just chosen because it sounded good. It didn't um, necessarily have any uh, significance. So that they, they could stand for Rock Raiders. Um, it, it could stand for whatever you like. Rolls Royce, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Rolls Royce Slugger. We need there an edit go. of that now. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, that's interesting. So it was literally just a happy accident that it could stand for Rock Raiders as well. Yeah, yeah, there, yeah. It, it wasn't, wasn't intentional. Like, Wow, that's that's really interesting. So did you literally just like start listing off like letters, like initials and just be like, okay, that one works. That one sounds nice. I, I don't remember doing that. On, honestly, I think it was just I, I picked a couple that sounded all, all right. You know, R.R. Slugger. I, I like the sound of that. <laughs> J.R.R. Cool. R. Tolkien, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes yeah, sense. Yeah. So just a really good coincidence then. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's cool. And how come? how come like a slimy slug was just the thing that you had to go for, for the mascot of the channel. Um, well, because it, it was all going to be rock raiders to begin with. We, we wanted to just, you know, just start with rock raiders, only do that. And the slimy slug creature was from the rock raiders game or the rock raiders property. 
and uh, it just seemed like the perfect mascot to, to choose. Something that was Lego adjacent, but wasn't actually built out of Lego. Um, uh. it, yeah, it, it just worked out really well. And even before the, the name Slugger, we were going to call them just Slimy Slug Reviews. Um, it was I the see. idea at, at, at first. But then we decided, well, you know what? We should make this character a character. <laughs> and, uh, exactly. And, and make it a little bit more cute, I think, as well, too. Because uh, some of the original artwork for, um, like, the drafts that we did, a lot of it was pretty just, like, um, I don't know, derpy looking, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh man, so there's slugger concept art we have yet to see then. Some oh yeah, oh stuff. yeah. <laughs> That's cool. In like a year or something for some kind of anniversary thing, you could just like do like a whole behind the scenes of slugger and show like the concept art and all that. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's probably some that hasn't made it um, into a video. The, the, a lot of it is in uh, slugger's first birthday episode um, okay. that, I, that I did a long time ago. Um, that one I do go through and I show a lot of the concept art. There probably is some stuff that didn't make it there, but some of it is just drawings on cue cards as well too. <laughs> just coming up with like, okay, let's try this, you know? <laughs> I see. So the beginning of the Slugger channel, or at least the creation in the character Slugger was kind of collaborative with the friend you mentioned, Brett, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I, I consider him the co-founder of the channel. That's cool. And besides the artwork, does he help with any other aspects of the channel, or is he like the channel artist? He's mostly a channel artist, um, but he has uh, helped uh, with like scripts and reviewing some of the videos and, and whatnot. He's a good sounding board for this sort of stuff. Um, and it, like he, he's my childhood best friend. We, we grew up okay. playing Lego together. Um, and uh, some some of the some of the other things that we've done for the channel is. Um, He's one of the people that uh, plays the Orient Expedition board game with me. So oh. when we sit down to do that sort of stuff, he's he's helping out and uh, playing along. So it's it's good. Yeah. And, and honestly, between me and him, when we were young, we both had all of the sets of the Orient Expedition. So I think our parents were probably c c colluding on that or something, right? Trying to, <laughs> trying to make sure that uh, we, we both got uh, all the sets, but neither one of us had the other uh, the other person's stuff as well too so between the two of us we had the whole collection it was cool that's cool that's clever it's like together you complete the you complete the collection yeah yeah all right that's well, all right that's awesome to hear that's really cool to know and also how come you decided you wanted slugger to be more of like a like a kermit and jim henson thing rather than just a representation of you online um i i think that that's I don't think that was a conscious choice on my part. I think that's something that I only realized was happening in retrospect. After doing it for about a year, I kind of looked back on it and then kind of realized, well, yeah, Slugger isn't one-to-one -one me. Slugger isn't um, exactly, you know, how, how I talk and how I interact in, in life. Um, I, I have to switch into teacher brain usually when I'm doing Slugger, which is, um, you know, go, going into that mode where I have to really be cognizant of what I'm saying and make sure I'm not dropping swears as I go through and, and doing that sort of stuff. Um, I, I, and I'm lucky enough that I find it easy to do, that I'm able to switch into this mode of, of thinking and talking quite easily. Uh, and then when I'm just relaxed, when I'm just my normal self, I, I can, you know, say say and do what I need to. Right? So, exactly. Um, yeah. It's kind of like going into content creation mode for a lot of mm -hmm. us. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. That's really cool to hear. Cause I did wonder when I first started seeing your videos, cause sometimes you'd speak in first person and sometimes the third person. <laughs> and I was like, huh, he switches a lot between that. That's kind of funny. I wonder why. I, I, honestly, um, I do that sometimes in, in my, my own life, just speaking about myself too. So that's, cool. uh, that's probably just a carryover. <laughs> I see. Well, it, it fits with this situation. It does. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a happy accident for sure. All right. That's really cool. Okay, so the general theme of your channel for, you know, anybody who hasn't seen it is Rock Raiders. So what is it about Rock Raiders specifically that drew you so much to it? And kind of what's your story with that? This is definitely something that I would say has been colored by nostalgia because I, I okay. did grow up with Rock Raiders and Rock Raiders was really important to me um, when I was young. And um, I, I, my first introduction to it was through the, the PC game that, that was uh, made and released 
Um, I, I think I got it in a big four pack or something with a bunch of those other older Lego games, Lego Island, Lego Creator, and I think Lego Chess as well too, which I played all of those just a ton. I, I loved those games growing up. And the game really inspired me to go and try to check, track down the sets. Um, by the time I had got the game though, and by the time I was playing the game, um, the sets were pretty much on the way out. They were pretty much retired by then. So I only was able to get a few of them uh, growing up. So most of my Rock Raiders collection is, again, as an adult, I've gone back and bought the Rock Raiders HQ, bought the Chief, you know, got got the Tunnel Transport, all, all these sets that um, I, I wanted as a kid but were, wasn't able to, to uh, get back then. I've been able to do that now as an adult. And um, I, I guess for me, and this, this is definitely a, a statement that is, again, colored by, you know, the rose-colored lens of lo- looking at that point in time, I, I think to me Rock Raiders is a, um, a really nice balance point between the oversimplification and the over-detail, um, at least for what I prefer from LEGO. Uh, because a lot of modern sets now, I, I just feel they've, they've got maybe 200 extra pieces in them that they probably don't need <laughs> at pretty much any scale, uh, any any size of set there. They're, they're just, they, they pack them full. They're really dense. Um, yes. Whereas a lot of these old Rock Raider sets are less than 100 pieces. And I, I, I like that building experience more because it's easier to disassemble and rebuild into something else. And um, it, it's honestly something you can memorize what how to do. Because uh, <laughs> um, a while ago, I did a live stream where I, I went through and tried to build all of the Rock Raider sets from memory. Now, I, I, oh. I didn't, I wasn't able to do it, <laughs> obviously. Oh, man, okay. I, uh, but I, I got really close on a few of them. I, I think I was only one piece away on the Chrome Crusher. And, and uh, that's that really speaks to how those sets were designed and how they uh, they did a lot with very little. And I, I think that's something that um, has kind of been, you know, uh, phased out of, of LEGO over time. So w- when I try to collect sets um, and, and build them, I, I, I prefer sets from that era. And Rock Raiders embodies it really well. I see what you're saying. That's very interesting. And you're right. It's kind of like a... An effective use of pieces. They use what they need, and there's no there's no filler or stuff like that. It's just what is necessary for the fun and play of it, and that's it. Yeah, yeah, and and, and like to contrast that with the uh, the the space stuff that kind of came before Rock Raiders, um, say like e- into the early '90s and like late '80s, that sort of era. Um, a lot of those sets just have like two colors and it's a lot of stacking plates and and bricks on top of each other it, uh, it can be very obtuse sometimes like 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 building those sorts of sets so i feel like rock raiders it, it marks a good departure from from that sort of methodology because it's kind of the first in those science fiction themed sets to um, utilize a much broader color palette. It has, I think, I think, five main colors and four accent colors, which was completely unheard of um, for, for LEGO sets at the time. It, it's yeah. a real trailblazer for, for modern color schemes, I think. Yeah, I see what you're saying. And, like, once again, going back to what you said about it being a little bit more simple and, like, easier to kind of get used to the feel of it, I guess, I do definitely see the merit of that because... One of the kind of nitpicks I do have about current Lego, which, I mean, there's nothing that can really be done about it, I don't think, because mm. it, it's evolved to that point. But one of the things I do realize can be a downside is that while the aim of Lego is, yes, you can take it apart and create whatever you want, there's so many different types of pieces now that it can be hard to just take one set and build it into something substantial if you don't have that prior experience. Whereas something like Rock Raiders or things like Bionicle or Hero Factory it was a lot easier to mix and match things and have it feel like something substantial. Yeah, yeah. And I, I feel like um, you're actually touching on a really strong point there, the the experience of building with, with these new parts. And um, it, it's something I definitely lack because I, I've had folks ask me before, um, like, oh, could you, could you do a modern remake of Rock Raiders? Like, what would your, like, if you were to design it, what would the sets look like? Or have you ever wanted to go on um, Lego Masters, you know, or submit something to Lego Ideas? And, and I have to tell all these folks that Lego has changed 
changed so much since my formative years with with the um, with the toy that the, I, I build sets nowadays that have pieces in them that I've never seen before, and and I'm just so unfamiliar with the building system now. Um, like I I feel like I could do any of those things if you asked me to do it in the '90s, but nowadays definitely <laughs> not. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's so different. It's so different. Absolutely. Have you ever wanted to kind of like try to learn the new system now or are you kind of happy just building the sets and doing your own stuff with the older things? Um, I, I think a little bit of both. There, there's there's definitely some uh, modern pieces that have really helped build old 90s style <laughs> uh, mocks, I would say. Uh, yeah. w- one of them came out, I think it was last year, maybe two years ago now. It's a, a two by two by two thirds uh, brick, and it, it's um, uh, it's got the kind of the ribbing on all sides of it there. Uh, I, I bought a bunch of those in black. They they match Rock Raiders really well, so they they kind of fit in into that uh, scheme quite quite nicely. Um, there, there's been some other pieces that I really like. I love the the two by two middle jumper piece. Um, that's something that is just so useful as a part. It, it and it doesn't look modern. It's not curved or has these new kind of modern sloped angles. Uh, it, it's something that fits in really well with old old style builds as well. So that, that's kind of what I what I gravitate towards is is a part that can masquerade and, and blend in with with Lego's history rather than something that sticks out like a sore thumb as being obviously modern. Yeah, I definitely see what you mean, and I, I do see the fun in that kind of using using newer pieces to your advantage to help level up the older sets and things of that sort yeah yeah absolutely um yeah i I think those are those are all really great parts um there's been some really nice like tile uh tiles that have come out as well too i I love the uh it's 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 a two by two uh tile but there's studs on one side like there's two studs on it and then it's it's tiled off on the other side just a great part like you put that down um as like the chair or like on on the seat of any sort of vehicle and you can pop the minifigure out easier it's just beautiful wonderful absolutely (laughs) absolutely so for anybody who hasn't seen your channel before Obviously, you have a big theme with Rock Raiders, but you do a lot more besides just Rock Raiders. So what are the kind of general Lego topics that you cover on your channel? Yeah. Um, so w- w- when I started, I-, I made a vow to not talk about other themes until I finished the retail sets of Rock Raiders. I had to break that promise a little bit to... to, oh. to um, talk about Galador's 20th anniversary because there was a very specific date there that I wanted to hit. So I, I missed it by that much, you know, but uh, it, it's um, it, it was something that I just wanted to make sure that I, I accomplished that first. Like I, at least at the end of the day, I could walk away and say like, I did this, you know, I, I did uh, Lego Rock Raiders and, and it's good. You know, I, I finished it. <laughs> um, and that, that might partially be inspired by um, Trick Bricks, which is the, the channel that I derived almost all my inspiration from. Um, so uh, Trick Bricks was uh, made by a guy named Jamie who um, talked about retro Lego, and he um, he had great scripts. He wrote his own music for for the videos and and like all this stuff. Yeah, like and 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 uh, artwork as well too. Uh, it, it was basically you know the 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 sole inspiration for our our Sluggers channel because when I watched Trick Bricks, I saw that you know what this can be done. Someone can do this. Like I I could do that. Um, and, and the, the thing I'm talking about trick bricks in, in past tense is because, uh, he, he actually left YouTube, um, long before I even started on, on YouTube. Oh. So he, he, um, just kind of, you know, d- disappeared from, from the internet more or less. And, uh, I kind of saw Slugger's channel as being, you know what, I'm going to pick up the mantle and uh, I'll just be Trick Bricks Part Two, more or less, right? So I'll just try to try to do what he did <laughs> as well. And so to that end, that kind of informed some of the decisions I made in terms of the sets I wanted to cover, the themes that I wanted to talk about. Um, mostly in that I didn't want to do anything that Jamie already did on Trick Bricks. It's it's kind of like the 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 Simpsons did it first sort of thing, right? Like I I don't want to do something yeah. that he already did. 
So, you know, Rock Raiders was a safe starting point because he hadn't covered Rock Raiders. Um, but he talked about, like, Lego Western. He did a lot with Lego Pirates. And he started Lego Adventurers, too. He got through the Egypt wave and the Amazon wave, um, but he stopped before Dino Island. So I kind of saw that as, as the signal. Well, okay, I need to do Dino Island, and then I'm going to talk about Orient Expedition in, in great detail, which is where I'm at today. <laughs> I see. That's really... That's really interesting. So you started off as kind of a spiritual successor, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm the power miners to his rock raiders, you know? <laughs> exactly. The um, the thing I was thinking of is uh, with Monkey Kid, the MK to Sun Wukong. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. That's really cool to hear, though. But, I mean, honestly, even though you say you started off as kind of like, you know, spiritual spiritual successor or something like that, mm-hmm. you have really, like, created something new in the Lego space and really made a name for yourself in a very short amount of time, might I say. Because oh, I you. remember, of course, because I remember I stumbled upon your channel. It was right after the 1012 subscriber special. I oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's a long time ago now. I realized, I, I didn't realize quite how long ago it was until I went back to do some research and I was like, oh, that that was two years ago. Oh my God. <laughs> but yeah, I remember, I, fa- I think the first video of yours I saw was the video about them discontinuing uh, Trans Neon Orange. Right, right. Yeah, the yeah. one that the YouTube algorithm just decided, everyone needs to see this video. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. For some reason, I yep. got recommended that. And I remember seeing your video and I was like, oh, this guy's new. He has like a really interesting style of like video. And then I just kind of continued from there. But you really just kind of appeared out of nowhere and then kind of took the Lego world by storm, at least to me, it seems like. (laughs) I really do miss being uh, YouTube's best kept secret, you know, because by the time (laughs) that 1,012 subscribers came around, that that had been, that's the one year mark. Like that, I'd been on YouTube for for an entire year making videos before um, like having 100 subscribers even, really. (laughs) So, uh, and honestly, like even going back to those those old videos, I think they they still hold up. I I held myself to a high quality standard. And um, yeah, so so it was fun for a time there being like this this small channel with like a really dedicated fan base of people that are like, wow, your stuff is really good. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And I I, I kind of miss it. You know, it's like it's um, it it, it's its own unique experience, I think. And, you know, being a a bigger channel now, I wouldn't say like a massive channel or anything by any stretch. But 33,000 subscribers is pretty big. uh, Thanks. Thanks. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. Um, It's It's just different now, you know, it's maybe not better or worse, just different. Absolutely. It's not as much of a tight knit thing now. It's a little bit more open to more people now that you're not exactly a secret as much anymore. Yeah, yeah. And honestly, some some videos like like the one you mentioned there, uh, those ones that were chosen, the chosen ones by the algorithm, um, those are definitely uh, jumping on points, obviously, for a lot of new fans. But those videos also kind of exposed me to um, what maybe a more general fan of Lego is like compared yeah. to, I think, the, the niche fan that my my channel really, um, you know, uh, appeals to, I would say. Um, so, like, ha- having to, you know, talk to, talk to folks that, um, uh, like, like, they're watching that video and, and they said, what, what do you mean, like, you know, this color has retired? Or, or And I'm talking about the other Rock Raider colors, too. I'm saying, like, you know, there's no more brown color, no more grays. And they're like, what are you talking about? Yeah, Lego still has browns and grays. And I guess I say, well, no, that's not what I meant. You know, like, I'm talking about the new brown color and the new gray yeah. color and stuff like that. So um, Exactly. They're yeah. not quite as in-depth about all, like, the little, the, I guess, some of the, like, interesting minutia of, like, the different yeah. classifications of stuff, I guess. So like you said, yeah. brown, whereas now it's reddish brown rather than brown. It's confusing, but I yeah, know I mean. yeah. And, and you're right to call it minutia. This is definitely something that doesn't appeal to a lot of folks that, that play with Lego and build with Lego. They, they don't, they, they could, could, they could care less, <laughs> you know, about, about this uh, sort of stuff. Um, whereas I think, you know, the RR Slugger channel and the stuff I try to do with, with my scripts is I try to appeal to that more niche uh, sort of idea. 
Absolutely, yeah. I do remember, I think I, I do remember hearing you at one point in one of your videos saying that, like, brown no longer exists and neither does purple. And I was like, what is he talking about? Brown and purple are still around. And I was like, oh, they're, like, specific shades. Okay, that makes more sense. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, that's really cool, though. But, you know, I will say, like, you, I think one thing that really makes your channel stand out is you have a really good talent for being able to make topics that seem like they would be, like, not that interesting, seriously interesting. You're able to make an entire video about a single piece and make it really engaging. Like, <laughs> I don't know how you do that, but it is really cool. And I think that's one thing that kind of, I feel has contributed to like your making you stand out a lot more compared to many other channels, which is, it's like, you do videos on a niche of a niche of a niche. And it's <laughs> like, like, first there's Lego. <laughs> then there's the kind of deeper, the, a little bit more into Lego where it's like the different themes, the older retro themes. That's a niche within a niche. And then things like the pieces and characters within that niche. Yet it's still super interesting to people who enjoy that and know about that stuff as well as people like me who didn't know stuff that in depth about it. For, yeah, for, firstly, I, I, I really appreciate what, you know, your compliments and your kind words. That's, that, uh, thank you. Thank you. Like, genuinely. Um I, I I guess um, yeah I've, I've said I've said it before in in the past to uh, to, to some folks and I probably have even mentioned it in a video too I would, I'd imagine uh, but our our slugger isn't a growth channel you know it's not a channel yeah. built built on uh, get, gaining subscribers gaining views that sort of thing it, it just that that's not even on my radar it's it's not not a concern to me. I just want to make videos that I find interesting, that I find funny, and uh, put, put them out there for other people to hopefully enjoy, too. No, absolutely. And I think, once again, that is something else that really makes you stand out, is that, well, yes, it's really nice to get the, I guess, recognition that you've gotten mm -hmm. recently. You're not hung up about that. You were perfectly happy with, like, 1,012 subscribers before. It was just, it's just you talking about things you enjoy and sharing it with other people in an entertaining way. And yeah. it's always been that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, but still, I, I find it really cool that, you know, you're able to make a video about Biker Bob, and it gets what? How much was it again? Hold on, I'm looking, looking for the video right now. 28,000 views! A seven-minute video about Biker Bob. I remember looking at that and thinking, how does he do it? What... What magic dust does he put on his videos? Because I watch it, and it's a great video, too. Like, it's just so cool to me. <laughs> Biker Bob, he's pretty cool. <laughs> he is. Absolutely. And I, I just think it's also really, really interesting because I'm somebody who I noticed before, I rambled a lot in my videos because I got very excited about topics and things like that. Mm. And I felt like I sometimes went a little bit too in-depth about things. But I, I find it really admirable that you're able to talk about things like certain pieces make entire videos about that but keep it educational entertaining and not ramble on about it like it's really really impressive thank you um yeah i, I don't know if there's if there's a secret sauce to that or not <laughs> um but I, I do spend a long time scripting my videos um that that, yeah. that takes a long Long process. I, I would say for any video that's approaching the twenty-minute mark, I, I would assume or or I would uh, estimate it takes about ten to twelve hours of writing the script alone. Um, oh wow! So okay. yeah, yeah, like it, it's it's a it's a big deal. Um, and what what I do, at least my my approach to that, my process is. Um, <laughs> this this is this is one of those bad advice things, you know. Don't do what I do. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, exactly. I, this is how I, I do it. Don't do it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I I don't start with a framework, so I don't start my scripts with like any sort of framework. I start right at the beginning of the introduction, you know, and I I just you know write my first little paragraph, and um, I, I just kind of free form go through and um, you know. Type, type out my thoughts and try to make interesting segues from topic to topic and I hope by the end of it by the time I'm done I, I've hit all the the topics I wanted to and if I didn't I go in and I try to insert in some some things or take some things out um, but the whole time I'm doing this I'm also speaking through it I'm, I'm I'm talking through the script as I'm writing it because I want to make sure that what I'm writing is is natural sounding and yeah. when when it comes time to actually sit down and record this. I want to make sure that the predictive side of my brain is able to 
understand the words that I wrote, you know, like days or months even ago, because uh, sometimes it takes, a, it takes a long time for these videos to, to reach, you know, uh, production rather than just pre-production. Um, so I try, to, I try to choose words and phrases that I, I use um, frequently enough that I won't be surprised by it. <laughs> That's um, very clever. Yeah, yeah, and, and actually, just uh, just last night, I was recording a, another script for an upcoming video, and it had a word in it um, that I, I ha- didn't, um, I, I don't don't use often, and I knew it was going to catch me off guard. Uh, the the word was actuation. I was talking about actuation, oh. the movement of of gears and such. Um, oh, that's cool. And uh, what I did, or past past Slugger, I should say, you know, what what uh, what he did is he went through it and he underlined it um, in the script, so that when I when I was holding it in front of me on a piece of paper, ready to read it, I looked down and like, oh, what's this? And, oh, okay, I get it. I remember now. You know, so leaving right, yourself right. hints, it, you know, it helps. <laughs> Absolutely right. And you print out your scripts, don't you? <laughs> yeah, I do. I'm I'm old that school is, like that. Right. That so. is wild to me. That is wild. Yep. That's yep. Hold them on cool, a piece though. of paper out in front of me, and then uh, just just read them. Yeah. <laughs> That's good though. You don't have to worry about like things popping up on your screen and accidentally editing stuff as you're reading. It's just boom there. Yeah, it's That's true. Very it's cool, true. Though. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I'd say your channel is also like a very good place because for for this kind of niche stuff, because some of it does exist out there, but not in such a professional way presented. You usually have to look through forums or things like that to kind of get that kind of info. So it's nice to have a place to learn about all that stuff in an entertaining and interesting manner, I'd say. Mm, thank you. Yeah. Of course. All right. So we kind of went over this a little bit before, but so how do you feel about power miners and would you ever like to see some kind of sci-fi mining theme again in the future? Ah, yeah. So, so the, the, the second point there, yes, I would love to see a science fiction mining theme okay. again in the future for sure. Um, it's just, it's a cool, um, it's a cool idea and uh, even though it is limited in scope, um, meaning that there's only so much you can do with space miners as a theme, right? Uh, yeah. I, I think I think Rock Raiders, you know, kind of kind of tap that potential pretty well. And then by the time we got to Power Miners, uh, even though it's not as science fiction focused, it's it's, you know, it's based on Earth. They're digging underneath the surface. Um, they, even by wave three of that series, they they figured out that well we ran out of ideas for the mining side of things. Now they're just they just have these water cannons fire. and things like that. Yeah, fire, right? <laughs> like so. Um, I, I, I think power miners stands as uh, an example of the limitations of the idea of space miners. You know, so they they, they, they had already exhausted the potential behind it then. So. As long as they go into it with the idea that like we're only going to get a year, maybe two years out of this idea, then then I think it, it'll it'll work. But if they if they if they want it to be the next Ninjago or something like that, I don't think I don't think it's got enough gas in the tank to make it. There. Yeah, I just feel like the concept of miners, regardless of how funky you make it, just doesn't quite have as much lasting potential. Mm-hmm. But I think it's definitely would work for another kind of like short burst Big Bang theme like you mentioned. What they could do is they could flip the script. It's aliens mining on Earth. There we Ooh, go. Ooh, I like it. <laughs> Something like that. But yeah, so you have made an, a pretty in-depth video kind of telling people what you think about power miners because I know you got a lot of questions about that. Mm-hmm. So if anybody wants to know more about that, they can definitely go check that out. But as just kind of a quick overview for anybody who's curious now, what... You, you mentioned before that you're not super huge on it, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I think as toys, they're really cool, and they're really good toys for that era of Lego. It, it's an era of Lego that I don't have a lot of affinity for, or sorry, a lot of affection for, I should say, that uh, 2009 to basically 2020 sort of era of Lego. <laughs> sorry, your yeah. childhood, <laughs> Kavi. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. wow, okay, I see how it is. Jeez, yeah, I know. <laughs> no, that's good. <laughs> Uh, th- there was just a lot of different um, changes in in set design philosophy during that era. A lot of bionicle part integration, a lot of combat yeah. in a box, um, which, which th- those are fine aspects. And, and I think anyone is totally welcome to to appreciate and enjoy those aspects of those sets. It's just not something I personally enjoy about them. So yeah. that's kind of what's what has kept me from that sort of stuff. It, it, it's a question I sometimes get. Um, because I spent a long time away from Lego, 
uh, a lot of folks will ask me, um, are there any themes that you missed out on that you want to go back and get? And I, and I look at the list of themes that came out during that era and I'm like, mm, no, not really. <laughs> so, no, okay. Yeah. Um, but Power Miners, I think, is a strong example of a, of a Lego theme from that era. Um, because it's not combat in a box, and um, because the the sets themselves take the focus, they they get the full part count into into the set. There's no little side builds that distract from from what you're buying. Like if you want to get the yeah. claw digger, you're getting the claw digger. You know, the thunder driller is the thunder driller. I love that. I love that. Um, I so see. as as toys, I think power miners is a really strong theme. Um, I wish the colors were different, you know, personally. Yeah. That's that's a subjective thing as well to you, of course. <laughs> but um, that's kind of where it ends for me, though. There isn't a lot of character to Power Miners beyond that. Um, and so there, there isn't a, a larger universe being explored. It's just this idea of, like, there's these rock monsters that live below the surface, and uh, we got to stop stop them from eating the crystals, so we got to collect the crystals first. <laughs> I and, understand that. You know, I guess that's cool and, and whatever. Um, but for for me, the the idea of you know rock raiders being these space miners lost in space, they're literally in another galaxy. They their their ship has been sucked up and and spat out into a foreign galaxy. They're on this uncharted planet. Who knows what's waiting for them? That that to me is just like dripping with intrigue. That is that's really cool. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot more mystery and space for story in that one. That's yeah. For sure. Yeah, yeah, and that, that that's that's kind of the big difference between the two for me. Uh, while I like both of their toys well enough, Rock Raiders just has a, that depth to it that um, I, I don't think Power Miners has. Yeah, I understand that, and I think a lot of Lego themes from you know like 2000 to 2010 ish didn't have that much super deep story either because they were mm-hmm. just kind of throwing them out, which I thought they were still cool, but they weren't super deep. You're right. And, I mean, honestly, when you think about it, the Power Miners are kind of the bad guys. Like, the Rock Monsters are just kind of doing their thing, and they're like, stop doing what you're doing! We're having earthquakes because of you! And then just kind of demolishing all of them. But we can look past that for now. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. Honestly, you could probably <laughs> lobby the same complaints against the Rock Raiders, too. They, they showed up uninvited yeah. to this planet and started stealing True. the food sources, you know? <laughs> I guess so. It's, it's, a, it's a moral debate we don't need to have. It's, it's toys. It's made-up storylines. <laughs> We can brush over that one. <laughs> we can be put like so. Uh, what's it like? Politically incorrect when it comes to Lego themes. Okay. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's funny because a lot of the things you said about power miners, I've actually because I didn't have a lot of power miner sets. One of my like my oldest Lego friend, uh, Dylan, he was actually on the first episode. Nice. He he was the power miners guy. His whole thing was power miners. He was like you, but power miners. Nice, and, nice. Yeah, so that's kind of how I got introduced to that. And I never really had any of the sets. I only have one to this day, I think. Um, but I always had an appreciation for it, that's for sure. Uh, but I, I totally see what you're saying about the theme, and I completely understand your point. And the thing I find kind of funny is I have a much bigger appreciation for Rock Raiders now after watching your videos. But a lot of the the opinions I had and sometimes still have are kind of the same ones that you have about Power Miners, but switched. Specifically with things like uh, the color scheme. For me personally, I'm not a fan of the Rock, Ra- of the Rock Raiders color scheme. Ah, I, yeah, I yeah. find it to just be a very strange mix of colors personally, and kind yep. of, I mean, a little bit ugly for me personally, but yeah, I have grown to fair. like it more. That's fair. I have it, grown to like it more. It's very gray, you know? <laughs> yes, that's for sure. But I have grown to like it more, and it's definitely like not as bad to me anymore as it was before. But that, and there's one other thing that you mentioned that, I forgot what it was, but no, it, it's interesting how that kind of like flip of generational thing, once again, what we each grew up with kind of thing. But mm-hmm. I have one Rock Raiders set and one Power Miner set, and it's kind of cool to see the the comparison between them, especially with them both being themes that had like giant big fig rock monsters and things like that. Right, right, yeah. And uh, actually, now that I'm thinking about it too, you know, the, the, the title of the podcast here, Teenage Fans of Lego, um, Power Miners is a series uh, that I bought as a teenager. Um, it's, really? Yeah, it's, it's one of the few sets I bought as a teenager, I would say, because when I was getting into my teens, Lego was shifting, you know, the new colors, the new molds, all that sort of stuff. That's all stuff that um, was kind of a friction point for me, and so I bounced off, basically. And, um, you know, I was, I was getting older. I was getting into music. That was kind of a new obsession for me. So right. I, I was kind of drifting away from Lego anyways, but I did recognize, even as a teenager, um, 
Gosh, I feel like I was in high school when I bought um, Power Miner stuff, if that dates Whoa, me at all. I know, crazy. yeah. <laughs> but um, the the, yeah, the, um, uh, the thing I recognized about it was that it's a spiritual successor to Rock Raiders. I recognized, okay, this is going to be the next generation's Rock Raiders, so I should go out and buy a few of these sets. And yeah, uh, yeah I went out and bought a few, and I enjoyed the sets well enough, but, um, you know, I it, 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 it really didn't... Thing. Sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, yeah. it didn't really stand a chance, I think, to to me, you know, um, because I was I was already kind of disinterested in Lego. I knew I wasn't gonna play with these sets the same way I had played with Rock Raider sets growing up. So yeah, it, it it's definitely not a one to one comparison. It it never really definitely can be, not. you know. Yeah. No, absolutely. It, it's more of a spiritual successor than anything else. Once again, it's like Hero Factory and Bionicle. They're similar. But they're very different at the same time. Hmm. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, that's definitely one I'll have to take your word on. It's uh, Hero Factory is something I missed out completely. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I get that. Also, before we move on to the next topic, I remembered the other thing I was going to say is oh, that yeah. while Power Miners definitely doesn't have as much of like a broad story within its universe like uh, Rock Raiders does, I, I'm pretty sure you know about this. But for anybody who doesn't know, there is some connection in the Lego multiverse because. The character Brains, I'm pretty sure, from mm-hmm. Power Miners, shows up in the Atlantis sets, and it's the same character, as well as there's one other character who I think, yeah, goes on to Galaxy Squad, I think? No, sorry, that's Galaxy Squad to Ultra Agents. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, was about, I was about to say that, yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. there are, I think it's Brains, I don't remember if there's another one. I, you could argue Clutch Powers, but I'm not really sure. <laughs> <laughs> you could argue, that's, a, yeah. <laughs> That's another can of worms. I know. It totally is. It totally is. <laughs> yeah, there's a great video Slugger has about um, reacting to the Clutch Powers movie. If you know what that is, it is a classic for many Lego fans. But our friend here has some controversial opinions on it. So I highly oh. encourage you to watch it because it's fun. It's really fun. And that, that and that's a video too hot for YouTube. You know, that's that's one. Yeah. The only way you can watch it is by grabbing the link in my in my Google Drive and watching it there. So. <laughs> right. Yeah, seriously. I, when you said too hot for YouTube, I thought it was like, you know, like how dare you have an opinion? Like how dare you not like something that most people do? <laughs> uh, right. Oh, right. No, because you did a video talking about it, but then you have another video of you actually reacting to it, right? Yeah, yeah. And it's the one where I'm actually doing the live reaction that YouTube just wouldn't let me upload. I tried so many times mm-hmm. editing it this way and that way. And in the end, I just I gave I threw my hands up in defeat and I, I just uploaded it on um Google Drive. And so there's a little little video, I think it's only a minute long, where you can grab the link in the description of that video. So there still is a video re- like on my channel. There's record of it being there, but it's not the video, right? So you just yes, gotta go absolutely. into the description. Yeah. I haven't seen the full reaction, so I'll have to watch that at some point. Oh, but yeah. <laughs> I'll have to calm myself first to not get triggered at your horrible takes <laughs> of uh, dissing my childhood movie. But no, seriously, it's a very... F- the, the, also, the video where you just talk about your experience with it was very entertaining. <laughs> That's great. That's great. <laughs> All right. Let's see. So I'd, I'd say let's get on to some more TFL-specific questions sure, now. Sure, sure. So once again, you kind of half answered this question, but there's another part to it. So... Were you once a T-Fall, and if so, what was your experience as one like? Did people ever give you a hard time for being a Lego fan as a teenager, and like anything else of the sort? Ah, yeah. Honestly, for for me, I, I, I think I have to largely fall on the side of the fence of no. I don't think I don't think I would I would classify myself as a as a T-Fall. I don't think I ever had that that experience there i I did buy a few sets as a teenager but i certainly didn't like play with them the same way i would have as a as a kid and uh, i it it was very limited compared to the amount of sets i had when i was younger um so like we're talking probably less than a dozen sets during my teenage years um so yeah that that sort of thing um is is interesting to me that to, to hear from other folks that that didn't have that that same experience that were fans of Lego throughout their teenage years, um, but like I said, I, I kind of mentioned it earlier here a little bit, but like when I was a teenager, that's when I first really started getting into you know playing rock music, playing right. instruments, getting in bands, doing that sort of thing, and that's kind of what took over my life for a while there. I, I kind of left Lego behind, left 
playing video games, that sort of thing, more or less, and uh, really gravitated towards playing music. Um, and so I was learn- learning different instruments, teaching myself how to play guitar, all these are- all these sorts of things. Um, so that's kind of where my where my time ended up going it, it is into that field. That's uh, cool. Yeah, yeah. So it's a li- little bit different. Okay, that's interesting. If only Lego Video existed around that time, it could have saved you. No, <laughs> definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> Maybe that would have kept you away from it forever. Like, geez, what crap are they making now? <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know when like a rock band came out. Did, was that around that time for you? Oh, you know what? I think I had that. Um, no, no, I don't think I had the Lego one. I, I definitely had Rock Band though. Um, okay. Yeah, that was that was a big craze back then. My goodness, right? Wasn't it? Yeah, I didn't even know the Lego version existed until recently. I was like, "What is this? Ah. That's real." But yeah, it was it's a very interesting thing to discover. But no, I just thought that was a funny thing. Yeah, right. yeah, I, I I used to play that uh, that that game a lot, and that that's actually honestly the game that taught me how to, the fundamentals of playing the drum kit as well too, right? Okay, so, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, because that's it, really it, cool. It teaches you like okay, you do kick beats on one and three, you know, and your snares on two and four, and you've got your hi hat over here. And I remember I had a um I had the drum kit. With with the additional symbols, you could get you could buy the symbol attachments and plug them in the back. So I had oh. the additional symbols, and I, I had I had used my kick drum so much that you know I'd, I'd been through so many kick kick pedals by that point. I'd snap like the plastic would snap or whatever. Um, that that my dad cut out a piece of plexiglass, like a, a square or a rectangle of plexiglass, and we drilled it into the the kick pedal. So I had this plexiglass kick pedal <laughs> with, with like a really firm, you know, uh, foot uh, yeah, kicker for funny. it. It was great. It, it was an awesome rig, but uh, that's probably in a landfill now, I'd imagine. Damn. Yeah. I see. That's interesting, though. See, video games can be educational. There you go. <laughs> but yeah, I see. So did so you said you bought like a few sets throughout your teen years, but you weren't really like a fan of it. Did like anybody raise an eyebrow even at you buying that, or was it all just like, oh, he's buying a few sets. That's cool. Whatever. I don't even know if um, I, I really um, televised that at all or not, um, because it was just okay. something I would go out and get on my own, and then bring it home, build it once, and be like yeah okay i did it you know um that makes sense yeah I, I don't think i don't think it would have been especially weird honestly uh back then um to, to still be you know buying lego but that um yeah i don't i don't have any strong memories of of that e- either way um i okay. i think i was probably just ostracized for other reasons so yeah. <laughs> oh no <laughs> oh man all right, so you had a dark age then. So looking back, what do you think would have stopped you from going into a dark age, if anything? Mm, yeah, good, 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 good question. Um, I, I think I think it's it's largely uh, two things, maybe three things here. Like obviously, you know, on one hand, growing older means that you probably aren't going to play with toys the same way you did when you were younger. That's, you know, I, I think yeah. I think that goes for a lot of folks out there. Um, it certainly was for me. Um, so a lot of the, the, the you know, make-believe and, and playing and doing all the voices and, you know, <laughs> all that sort of stuff, that's something I did as a kid and I loved doing it. But, you know, as I got older, I didn't, you know, didn't, uh, didn't seem like that was what I wanted to do with my time anymore. Um, so that, that was that was one thing. Obviously, you know, g- shifting interests, getting into music, really, you know, spending all my time. Right. You know, you come home from school and the very first thing is you pick up your guitar and you play until your fingers bleed. And then you just do that every every day of every week of every month. Right. So like that sort of commitment to to an instrument um, really precludes anything else, any other hobbies that you might have. Just go by yeah. the wayside. Right. So I think that was a big thing, too. Um, but the third thing, too, uh, with with addition to those ones, is that Lego was shifting. Lego was changing. And I didn't like what I was seeing. Like, um, I, I think, honestly, and, and I know I, I've, I've made fun of the darling child of Mars mission before <laughs> I've, I've definitely poked fun at that one. And uh, yeah, that, that's kicking a hornet's nest. Let me tell you, if you say anything bad really? about Mars mission, Gen Z really? comes out with their, with their pitchforks. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I didn't realize it was that beloved. I, yeah, I, I didn't either. I, I kind of ob- like, I always saw that one as the obvious bad one. Like I, I, I thought like just pointing at it and laughing was generally accepted, but I guess I was wrong. <laughs> But Once again, uh, how dare you have an opinion? <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> that that to me that series 
symbolizes um, my departure from Lego more or less because when when I looked at it back then and it, it, it's it's so rooted in uh, life on Mars like life on Mars pieces and and the the vibe of life on Mars but it's just been kind of redone and more or less bastardized in a way <laughs> um, that's uh, th- that to piece. yeah I know <laughs> that that to me was uh, just kind of like wow I guess Lego has completely lost their way like this is not at all what I want like it, it's just a rehashed copy Copy of what I grew up with, what I really enjoyed, and it's done far worse. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, I was yeah. I, I, that, by that point, I was like, I guess they're out of ideas. You know, you know, I'll move on with my life. <laughs> I see that. So in retrospect, it's all Mars mission's fault now. But that's interesting. <laughs> if Mars mission didn't happen, we could be in a very different space. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. For you, it was more just a natural progression, kind of just moving away from it naturally with everything happening in your life rather than Mm -hmm. something big happening with Lego. I mean, Mars Mission contributed a little bit, but it wasn't like that was the sole thing. (laughs) Yeah, I think Mars Mission is emblematic of of the change in in Lego. exactly. Yeah, and and even still, when I go back, and I I have some Mars Mission sets now. I went back as as an adult and I bought a few Mars Mission sets because I was like, you know what, I, 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 I can't just throw rocks at this theme and not have ever built any of the sets and um yeah so i so i got a few of the sets i i, I don't like them <laughs> i think they're still bad <laughs> yeah that's fair yeah yeah so um yeah i don't think my opinion has changed on it <laughs> you put in the effort to at least experiencing it though to yeah to experience it rather than just looking at it and going i don't like it yeah. Without actually like experiencing it, you know, that's that's very good. I I admire that. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, it's it's something that I feel like more folks online need to do is have an informed opinion of things, right? That is the understatement of the decade. <laughs> <laughs> and I was gonna say, do you think anything would have kept you into Lego as a teenager, or not really, because it was just kind of where you were at as a person and your interests generally? That's a really tough uh, tough question to answer accurately um it it really is like you know i don't know i I honestly don't know um yeah maybe a return to the more blocky aesthetic maybe more science fiction themes um that weren't terrible you know (laughs) so and and any of those things uh could have helped but uh, there's no there's no way to know if there was a silver bullet to, to keep me interested. And honestly, at the end of the day, I'm I'm kind of glad I I, I, was, I wasn't interested anymore because I learned all, all these different musical skills that now my entire career revolves around. Um, right. And it's it's not something I would have got into um, if I didn't shift away. I, I'm sure I would have developed other skills and maybe my life would be very different. Maybe I'd be a Lego employee or I'd, I'd be an engineer of some kind. I, who knows? Who knows? But uh, yeah. yeah, music was, was a big, uh, big draw for me, a big pull. So yeah. I see. I guess that really goes to show that like it's also okay if you want to take a break from Lego, whether that be as a teenager or not. Like it, it's not a cult. You're allowed to leave if you want to, if you want to permanently or if you just want to take a break, right? Yeah. You're allowed to step away from it and then come back. That's not like, if you feel like that's what you need to do for yourself to either continue enjoying it or you just feel like you need a break from that or just to say goodbye to it generally, that's okay at the end of the day, really. Yeah. Yeah. And like, as you can see, you can come back to it later and then have a whole new appreciation for it after experiencing other aspects of life and things you enjoy as well. Absolutely, absolutely, and, and perspective is is a huge part of that, um, as as well. Um, I, I I think uh, th- this is p- potentially you know maybe a future video topic at some point in time, but um, recently I've been thinking more about this idea of how our perspective of um, of, of Lego and interacting with with the toy. Uh, can really influence how how we um, see the usefulness of certain pieces, and I, I guess what I mean by that is, um, a, as a as a teenager, as a teenage fan of Lego, just jumping back into Lego kind of cold turkey, uh, and, and buying like a set from Power Miners when I hadn't bought any sets from like 2008 or 2007 or anything like that, um, buying buying a set from Power Miners and seeing like wow okay there's a lot of like really new specialized pieces here like these are these are crazy pieces um, e- even looking at things like like cheese slopes as being like specialized as being new oh you know God, I, that's I know crazy. I know isn't that, isn't that wild now and <laughs> that um, 
I never, for, for a long time, I never understood the criticism that folks lobbied towards sets in the early 2000s and the late 90s as being, like, with, with large... Um, super specialized molds and things like that, and I was just like, I, I don't, know, I don't understand what they're talking about. All the modern Lego is filled with it, but it, it was because I wasn't um, collecting a lot of modern sets. I, I didn't know that these parts existed in other sets as well too. When I looked right. at like the Thunder Driller, it's like, okay, well, there's the big you know, curved top section of the Thunder Driller. That's a big giant piece. That's a super specific mold for the Thunder Driller. When in reality, it's not. You know, it's something that they used no. on like like airplanes and other other sets like that um so there there is a difference there and and it is something that's uh fueled by like your perspective and your experience with with the with the toy so i think that's kind of kind of interesting it is definitely i agree with you there i think that'll be a very cool video so if you do make that people look out for that because that, <laughs> that, that's a very interesting topic there yeah yeah well we'll see if it ever matures into a full script there, there there's there's a Word document on, on my computer. It's been been there for years now, almost three years, and it's just video ideas, right? So anytime I come up with an idea, I write it on this list, and I hope that you know one day I can scratch them all off the list, but I come up with the ideas faster than I'm able to, to make the, the videos and write the scripts. Uh, so it's the, it's yeah. the age-old problem. <laughs> Not I feel time. that. I, I have a whole list as well of different videos I want to do ranked by like how much interest I have in doing them. That's and a smart I, idea. That's a that's the way helpful. to do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The only issue is that then the ones that are lower down kind of never get made. They're more mm. just there. Just like, yeah, that was an idea. But it's so cool to look at. But yeah, I have one of those too. And like the, the other issue I find is having ideas that are really big to execute. Like you could do them. Yep. But it's, it's just like really big. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. All right. So. So if LEGO was going to start focusing on teens more, like they have with the whole Adults Welcome campaign, what do you think they could do to cater towards T-Falls more? Oh, wow. From your, from your perspective there, having <laughs> gone into a dark age and all that. Honestly, th this is a question that I I want to answer more as a teacher. <laughs> like, uh, as a, Go for it. A, than, than, as a, than as a LEGO fan, because that's where I interact with teenagers the most, is, is in my job. Right, because um, you're a music teacher. Yeah, or? yeah, yeah. So I, I teach all ages, um, and uh, the, the classes that I teach are usually divided up by age. So sometimes you've got young, you know, five or six year olds that you're teaching piano to, and then sometimes you oh, got that must be fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And <laughs> sometimes you got fifteen or sixteen year olds that you're teaching uh, piano to, or singing, or whatever instrument it is that uh, the class is focused on. Um. Yeah, so am I in touch with Gen Z or Generation Alpha? You know, that's that's, well, that's oh, right. the question, Those exist right? Now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but I think answering from a teacher perspective would be really interesting. So however you feel like going about it, go for it. Yeah. Um, I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's it's such a hard question and, and there there are people at the Lego group that are paid lots of money to come up with the answer to this question of like how do you appeal to the teenage de uh, demographic? And yeah. um it, it's 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 tricky because they they do definitely have a very different life than I had as a teenager that my parents had as a teenager, you know, just uh, it, everything's been accelerated so much. Um, that th these are folks that have grown up in, in a world um, with with screens, you know, with interaction with people online, yeah. instant communication. Um, how does a plastic toy fit into any of that <laughs> is, is the tough question. And, and when you ask a question like that, it's really easy to see why um, themes like Hidden Side or video, like you mentioned earlier, with this app integration, became such a such a, a bee in the bonnet for for Lego. Like they they really wanted to chase this dragon and, and see if they can pin that down somehow. And uh, I, I don't know how successful those themes were with with that age demographic that they were trying to target. Um, but when I look at a, a theme like Hidden Side, that does seem like something that would be fun for teenagers it, it's kind of edgy in, in a way you know it's got this cool like lovecraftian aspect to the to the buildings and stuff True. like that um I, I and and you know that the characters aren't just kids like they do seem like they're in their teenage years kind of chasing ghosts and doing things so yeah, yeah i feel like hidden side was a good attempt i think that, that that was a good a good uh swing at the at the at the ball there 
I see. That's interesting. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, you say they have people that they pay to do this research stuff, but I, I somewhat question if they've ever actually had a teenager come in and tell them what they think. <laughs> as a teenager myself, they've done a they've done a few things that have hit the mark, I feel. But a lot of the time, and I've said this before in previous podcasts, so I'm sorry to people who listen regularly. You're going to hear me say it again. <laughs> it does feel like they try a little bit too hard to, like, like they're pandering a little bit often, actually, mm-hmm. when they do this mm-hmm. stuff. So, like, Hidden Side, like you said, I mean, once again, it's just specific for every person. But for me personally, that came out when, uh, yeah, when I was, like, 15, uh, 14, 15. Wow, that's crazy. And, um, (laughs) yeah, anyways, though, but that came out around that time. And I remember I thought it was cool, but kind of as it went on, once again, it's kind of like they're either, they do really good on the tech side or they do really good on the set side. Mm. But it's really hard to do both for them, it seems like. And even yeah. then, I don't feel like they even need a tech thing to make something that's good for teenagers. Once again, Bionicle. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah, that was the yeah. teenage theme. It still is. I feel like if they did something like that that isn't trying to pander, I feel like it would do a lot better. But it's, yeah. it's a definitely a difficult topic, that's for sure. And a previous guest I had on, I can't remember which one right now, did say that also teenagers are quite complicated to kind of cater to, which that, that is true as well. So it's yeah. a difficult one. But. Yeah, I, 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 th- I think all of the points you mentioned are, are uh, right on the money there. Um, and I, I think um, if we look at, you know, the modern offerings of, of Lego, um, the, the, a lot of the themes now, at least to my in, in my perspective, have a little bit more of like a, a kind of a kid target demographic. Like like Absolutely. you know, c- comparing Hidden Side to Lego Dreams. Um, while I I personally prefer the sets in Lego Dreams better, like I feel I feel like the construction and you know I like the appeal of that a little bit more than I did with Hidden Side. I wasn't as as thrilled with the the sets in Hidden Side, but I I definitely think Dreams is for kids like like that's that's for like i don't yeah. know really young children um because yeah, the, the subject matter and like the corresponding show that goes with it and just the design of the characters it's all kind of like i, I don't know cutesy um yeah it, that to me is not a, a a theme that was probably targeted for <laughs> anyone above the age so. of 10 right you know <laughs> so <laughs> yeah i get what you're saying yeah. there definitely yeah, no, I mean, it's an interesting. No, no story, shame, yeah. no shame to anyone that that's that's building and playing with Lego Dreams that, that's listening right now. Oh. I'm a 30 year old man playing with my crocodile car, so you know you're you're, yeah. you're good. You're good to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, Dreams is cool though. I will say, I I actually want Dreams to stay around. I think they could do some really interesting stuff with that. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. No, you you make a good point there. And what you said about how it feels like more themes in recent years have felt more like kid focused rather than kind of all encompassing. I do agree. It feels like around. Around 2012-ish is when they started to kind of go down that route, where rather than things being enjoyable for kids and other people, they kind of put a more kid focus on everything, Mm. which once again, that is kind of the target demographic, but also there's way more than just that. So it's a tricky one, but it's an interesting observation you made. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I'd say we can get into some viewer submitted questions now. Sure. So I'm going to ask the first one. It's by at 17. And he asks a really interesting question. And he, I asked him to elaborate on this one specifically because I thought it was really interesting. And the, the Instagram character limit didn't let him put more there. So this is a question for you specifically. Was there a theme that took you out of Lego? And what he means by that is, was there like a theme or set that embodied all the problems you had uh, that was growing in Lego? Example, juniorization in early 2000s, that it made you quit quit lego basically and i i feel like mars mission kind of falls into yeah that yeah for you, yeah right? i i 100 agree and it, it's funny uh, like at 17 always has great questions for me yeah. <laughs> so oh you know him. I, oh yeah absolutely yeah yeah so, so, That's <laughs> that, so that, cool. i had a little chuckle when i when i heard the name drop there so yeah but yeah Mar- mars mission to me is uh it's it's all all in one it's 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 um a rehash of an old 
series that was not as good as the series it was based on. It's uh, bionicle parts everywhere in it. It's combat in a box. Every single set has like two builds that aren't very good because they have to accommodate each other. Like it's it's just the full whammy. Oh, and 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 uh, Martian design that's not as good as the old Martians. Astronaut design that's not as good as the old yeah. astronauts. Like like everything about it to me is just worse. Like it's just a step down <laughs> in every department. <laughs> so um, I see. yeah. I, I think Mars mission is, is, is my, is my pick. <laughs> That's a fair one. It's definitely a very funky theme. I will say that I was never really aware of its existence until much later. And even now it's it, to me, I find it kind of cool, but I totally see everything you're talking about yeah, with it. Yeah. And he asks another interesting question. This is for both of us now, which oh, I think is the nice. first question. He's one of the first people to ask questions for both me and the guest. Hey, that's, that's very courteous. Yeah. <laughs> very. So thank you, man. Um, what is the strangest non-licensed Lego theme? I feel like there's a list for that. There's so many. Ooh. So many strangest non-licensed ones. You can go first with this. Oh, gosh. I was going to pass it to you first. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> let's, take, let's take a second to think because okay. there's a lot. And you'll be happy to hear that I'm not going to say Galadon. <laughs> it, it's a contender. It is strange. It is. Yep. It is. But um, mm. oh, it's what, hard. What are they called? Um... I'm going to go with uh, Zooters. Zooters, I think, is the name of what they're called. You know, I find that really funny because I have no idea what Yeah, <laughs> I've never heard of that. Yeah, they were a Duplo, like, lights and sound sort of toy. Like, I, I just, I never had any of these. I only learned about them as an adult. And um, I think it was Brixar that talked about them the first time that I remember oh. seeing them. Oh, yeah. I looked them up. Yeah, I see what you mean. I've seen these before. I never knew what they were yeah. called, though. Yeah. Are, are, are they Zooters? Did I get it right? I think. Hold on. Uh, da, da, da. Yeah, Zooters. Zooters. Okay, cool. All yeah. right. <laughs> weird. Yeah, definitely weird, hey? <laughs> yeah, that's that's a pretty good... So they made, like, sounds and lit up and stuff? Yeah, like that? yeah. <laughs> Fascinating. Yeah, Lego Duplo did did some funny things. It really that's did. That's for sure. I, I think maybe another one that is in the running there is uh, Duplo uh, Too Low. I think it's called Too Low, like T O O L O, like tools. You're using tools, and the the gimmick for that series was that every set came with like a little screwdriver, and you actually connected the bricks via screw connections rather than using the studs and anti studs primarily. Excuse me, what? I, oh, I know. <laughs> my God. And here I was thinking I'd seen every, like, every general theme that Lego had created. But no, still surprised to this day. Yeah. What the heck? I know. I'm going to have to pop a picture of this on screen because that is weird. <laughs> it, it feels like a knockoff Lego Duplo set, like some other off-brand company. But then I see the Duplo figure in it. It's so weird. Yeah, what? yeah. And, and I think a lot of these ideas were born from the general consensus around that era, like the 2002, early 2000s era. Lego wasn't doing well financially. There was this consensus um, or this growing fear amongst the designers that the brick itself was becoming outdated. So they had to right. evolve Lego beyond the brick. And that's uh, the scary thought, you know, when you've built your entire company uh, around this idea of every toy that we have ever made, you know, starting in like the, the 60s to now it, it is uh, compatible with each other. Like right? they all build upon each other. And yeah. there, there really isn't like another toy theme that you can compare Lego to in that in that respect. Like Lego is a monolith of its own uh, creation. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, so the, a lot of these things, Galador is another example, right, where they're, they're like, okay, yeah. maybe Lego can become action figures. Like, we'll, we'll do that from now on, you know? <laughs> so. Absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. Okay. I, I got a lot of new info today. That's something to think about. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, so for me, there's a lot of them. I'm going to, like, not count things like Jack Stone. I feel like that's kind of a cop-out. <laughs> um, I can't, I know I've seen some of the strangest, like, th there's something probably stranger than the one I'm going to say that's more obscure. I can't remember right now, but one that I do feel goes into this category is, um, 
God, I don't remember the exact name of it because there were multiple things kind of similar to it. It was the one where they were trying to copy Barbie. It was like oh, uh, Scala, Scala, Scala. Yeah. yeah, that it's just it's so messed up. Yeah, they, it's even the studs are like flowers, and it doesn't yeah. it feels <laughs> so, and just the dolls, like it just feels so wrong on every level. <laughs> yeah, and like the horse piece, it's just a dull horse. Like, yeah, it's not, it really is. It's yeah, not even, it's just a it's a Barbie horse that they said, right, we're gonna put this in a Lego set. It's Lego now. Like, yeah. no, it just it doesn't fit. The ones that preceded those that kind of had a little bit more articulated joints feel like a little bit more mm-hmm. Lego like. Yeah, the, the Belleville just, series. Yeah, Belleville, had, yeah. that was it. Yeah, yeah but no, mm-hmm. Scallop, nah. They just, that's just messed up. <laughs> I'd say that probably for me. Yeah, yeah it's though. a gr- it's a great pick too. Yeah, it, the very very strange uh, things there. Um, to, right. Maybe to flip the script here a little bit. What's the strangest um, series or theme that Lego makes today? You know, because we're kind of talking about some of the old stuff, but maybe there's a weird one that that we're not thinking of that um, they they still make or <laughs> or, or just came still... out. You know, maybe Dreams is the weird. The weird one here I, I don't know i'm going to be honest this is the second time lego has made a theme that once again if anybody is younger listening just going to mention a slightly more mature topic if, if you're younger you shouldn't be listening to this this is for teenagers but anyways <laughs> a slightly more mature topic um this is the second lego theme that they've done now from my knowledge that has kind of like tones of like drug use in it first it was Chima, right and right. now it's mushroom like you're, that's kind of weird. I mean, purple mm-hmm. mushrooms, Dream World, really? Like, I yeah. don't know. It's Good a point. bit weird to me. But, yeah, no. The fact that Chimo was kind of just furries on drugs was just really, really <laughs> funny when I think about it. <laughs> it totally was, though. It was furries in a drug war. Absolutely. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was weird. But, yeah, I feel like Dreams probably is a current one. Could be a a big contender. Yeah. I feel like there's, yeah. there's probably another one, but I'm not sure right now. How about yeah. you? Um, yeah. Yeah. Like, like I, I think, I think dreams, maybe the obvious pick here, but, um, gosh, I got, I, I feel, there I feel is a like, weirder one. I feel. Yeah. Like, like I feel like, like weird in different ways, you know, like, um, I, I think the, the adults only thing they did for a while there was kind, kind of strange. Like that was kind of a weird way to, um, you know, market sets, just put them in a, black box that says 18 plus on it you know that's yeah. that's kind of that's they're making some interesting decisions with, with that you know <laughs> it did kind of work though funnily enough yeah. surprisingly like people saw a black box and were like oh it's not colorful i can buy that yeah yeah yeah, yeah but they're right. still doing that aren't they they just change it to icons yeah right? yeah I, th- I think i think you're right about that yeah i don't think they're doing it as much some sets that are in the icons line do have like cool box art though like the galaxy explorer and stuff like that but Mm -hmm. yeah it is it is a little bit weird but surprisingly it worked which i'm not sure whether to be happy or sad about (laughs) definitely that was that was a good question yeah Uh, thanks that was really good yeah all right let's see um okay this is a funny one this isn't a proper question it's just funny so (laughs) excuse me if i pronounce the name wrong there's gonna be a picture on screen farm regatta yeah farm regatta (laughs) asks multiple (laughs) And the, the reason he, they asked multiple is because I put in the little question sticker on my story, submit questions for Slugger here, feel free to ask multiple. Funny guy here. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's Farmer Gata. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. That's how you pronounce it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Then from Paleozoic Bricks, yep. uh, we have the question... Do you feel that you revolutionized reviewing for Lego and inspired others? Oh, that's that's so kind. <laughs> that's so kind. Thank you, thank you, Paley. So it bricks. <laughs> I know, right? Um, gosh, I, I, no, I don't. I don't think so. But I, I may, maybe. Maybe inspiring others, because I, I know Paleozoic Bricks has uh, talked about this, too, um, in, in terms of uh, their channel, because they, they um, talk about Chima. They do Lego Chima reviews, um, which I really recommend folks go check out. If, if you like Slugger's approach to things, I think you'll you'll also enjoy Paleozoic Bricks' approach as well. Um, but he cited um, my Time Cruiser series as being one of his inspirations because here I was taking a much maligned Lego theme, Lego Time Cruisers, and showing it some love. And uh, he feels he's doing the same thing with uh, Lego Chima as well, too, because um, I, I, cool. I think it, it has may, maybe a mostly negative sort of reception within Lego circles. 
Um, definitely. Yeah. That has yeah. nothing to do with what I mentioned before about it, but definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. I like Shima, though. It's cool. But yeah, yes, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I, I guess to, to, the, to the first point of, of his question there um, about revolutionizing the way Lego reviews are done, uh, I, 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 don't, I don't think I, I've done anything maybe that dramatic, but I, I, I do feel that um, there, there's, there's more to a RR Slugger video than the set that's in front of the camera. Um, I do try to make sure that all of my scripts tie into the larger lego tapestry and they don't just focus on okay these are the parts this is the price this is you know these are the minifigures that sort of thing because those sort of videos are already uh, out there on the internet if you want to see a proper review of these things just go to jang's lego bricks channel right you know what watch his reviews right right? he'll he'll talk you through it and 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 his stuff is great for that because it you know no bells or whistles just boom 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 here's the set um, Absolutely. I just don't feel like I have anything to add in that sort of vein, and um, I don't feel like a, I guess, a set review, quote unquote, is what is really appealing to me. So when I talk about a Lego set, I want to talk about how it links with other Lego sets and how it, um, how the parts that that constitute it, uh, organically grew through the evolution of the of the company and the toy brand, and uh, just all these other cool things that I, I think are are interesting. Um, or, or the Orient Expedition is another example too. I'm using it as as a way for me to learn more about these regions and these cultures. Um, so as I'm doing the research for the videos to talk about the sets, I'm also researching the the lifestyle of of the folks that lived in these regions oh. in 1925. Right. So I'm learning a lot that too cool. <laughs> exactly now i see what you're saying that's that's really really cool honestly and also i realize i think i i read the question with a slightly different context i think he's more stating it it's how do you feel that you revolutionize reviewing for <laughs> inspired others? how do you feel about this <laughs> but yeah oh, i don't <laughs> have a choice in the matter <laughs> no exactly you did how do you feel about this <laughs> well it's awfully uh, kind I, I appreciate that thank you paleo's oak bricks yeah all right, let's see. All right, we have a question from Emersonic, or mm-hmm. Emersonic Reviews, yep, yep. who asks, will we ever see a Slugger Studio tour? Uh, no, no, I don't think so. Sorry, sorry, Emersonic. Uh, and nah. yeah, Emersonic has, has a YouTube channel as well, too, where, where they go through and they, they uh, talk about all, all the uh, Lego sets. And uh, they've, they've got some interesting, uh, you know... Um, I guess like takes. I, I want to say some hot takes and things like that. So that that's cool to see. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't think I, I will have anything as presentable as, as their as their stuff is. Um, the, largely the reason for that though is because I do all this Lego photography. Um, I, right. I store my Lego in bins and it's it's very haphazardly just kind of piled up in my basement in in containers because I don't want dust to collect on them. So I, I don't present. Uh, everything, right? I, I don't um, put things up on display often. Most of my Lego is in a bin somewhere, just waiting for when oh, wow. the video is, you know, going to be made uh, to, to keep it away from dust. Because <laughs> when, when, when you photograph Lego up close, everything shows uh, up. It's such a headache. Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> So. I can imagine. I can imagine. Yeah. I, I see. Yeah. I, I guess, I guess also to the, um, it, like, it, I, I don't, um, I don't organize my stuff like on a personal level as like presenting to an audience. Um, so right. w- I guess what I mean is like for me to put a camera in my, in, you know, walk around my home with, with this camera, I'm basically showing people my house. I'm showing people how I live. Like it's not slugger <laughs> yeah. anymore. It, it becomes me like my personal life. Right. So that's, that's I kind of the bridge. It's the Rubicon. I don't want to cross. Um, so that's fair. Yeah. It, you know, it, it's just the way that I organize things. It's pretty messy. It's, it's not appealing. It's not attractive. So it's, but it's, it's effective. Yeah, yeah. It gets, it gets results. <laughs> Exactly. You know what you could do for that instead is you could make like, like a little home for Slugger and video it like that from his perspective in his studio. Oh. Maybe it's in like a cave in the rocks or something, and he has like I don't know, like a crystal camera or something that like refracts light. I don't know. I'm writing that that down right now. That is such a great idea. Thank you. (laughs) Of course. 
Also, can I just say that I love that so far, like, you know every single person who's asked a question <laughs> here, like, on a somewhat personal yeah, level. That's I know. so cool. Yeah, I, I think it's cool, too. <laughs> uh, th- that's honestly one of the... One of the um, the rewards of doing this is is answering you know questions and um, answering comments in, in in the video description or the comment section I should say. Uh, whereas like I think a lot of folks um, have have said to me before in the past that they're just surprised that like oh wow I didn't expect you to respond or, or <laughs> that sort of thing and I, I have to remind yeah. them like no that's why I do this that 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 is the fun part to me like like I do enjoy making the videos and that that is a big a big draw and a big part of the appeal but I really enjoy just talking with people and learning more about um, everyone else's lives as well <laughs> like it, it's cool absolutely it's cool. that's once again a really special thing about your channel I feel you still keep that kind of personal connection there regardless of how many subscribers you have I, I try to yeah i definitely i definitely yeah, try to of course it gets hard to when a, a video has a ton of comments but you still do your best to yeah yeah it, it has gotten harder um that that's for sure but it's it, yeah I, I did have to shift somewhat i don't know when when that shift took place but i used to be able to respond with a comment to every comment like i'd reply to every comment um when, when yeah. my channel was smaller but uh, at some point, uh, that just became unfeasible, um, and, and it became exactly. it, sort of a, an activity that I used to do, where I would sit down for two to four hours, sometimes just responding to comments on the latest video, whoa. and I kind of had to take a step back and be like, okay, whoa, this this needs to stop. This is a little too much. Um, I'm spending more time yeah. commenting on the video rather than making the next one. Like the, I, I, I saw the writing on the wall. It was like, this is not something I can continue to do. <laughs> it's it's unsustainable. That totally makes sense. <laughs> so. Absolutely. It's understandable. Like it is hard to reply to a lot of comments when you can cons- consistently get them like that. But so the fact that you just try to still interact with people a lot and keep that kind of personal feel is really lovely. Mhm. Thank you. Yeah. Of course. So, we have a question from Cool Guy Dom. Oh, I don't asks, I don't know if I know this one. Yeah. He was on Lego Masters. <gasps> Whoa, celebrity. Yeah. Absolutely. So he has he has two really good questions here. So the first one is, what are your goals for your channel, and where would you like to be? Uh, where would you like it to be a year from now? Cool. Um, yeah, that's a great question. Um, I. <laughs> it's gonna it's gonna sound morbid as an answer. Um, my goal for the channel is I want to get through all these video topics that I have, video ideas, uh, either before I die or before I uh, lose interest in the hobby altogether because it's happened okay. before. It could happen again, right? You never know if, like, okay, maybe as an adult I've, I've come back to LEGO, but who knows? Like, that, you never know what the, if, if that's going to be a permanent thing or not. Um, yeah. so yeah, like <laughs> I, I, I feel like, and again, it's a Jim Henson metaphor too, because, uh, like, and, and, um, sorry, I know I'm, I'm wandering here, but, uh, defunct land, the, uh, the YouTube channel, he, he talks about Jim Henson really well in some of his, his videos and describes him as someone kind of racing against time to get things done, you know? And, and I, I sometimes relate to that where it, where it's, uh, it's like, I feel like, I, d- I don't know, maybe there's a sort of Damocles hanging above me, and I just, you know, maybe one day, you know, you never know what happens, right? So um, I'm, I'm always trying to get get these artistic projects done, just just, just ship them, get them done, right? <laughs> like, yeah. don't, don't, don't wait for perfection, just, you know, get, get them out the door, get them done, um, so that... That's good to have, yeah, not waiting for perfection. Yeah, especially. yeah, so that, so that you have <laughs> something you can point to at the end of the day, Um uh, like the the channel has been great for that at, at least it, um, for me because I, I go back and I watch my videos all the time. Um, it's it's something that you know I make them because they're entertaining to me. And uh, sometimes like if I'm just sitting down and having dinner and I want to watch something, I'll just throw on a slugger video. Why not? You know, <laughs> like I'll go back and watch. I do that, I do that too. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's good. Yeah, um, it, it, it's definitely something that a lot of creators um, they they can't stand watching their their own stuff because all they see are the mistakes. Yeah. And um, I, right. I, I can understand that. Yep. It's um, but I, I feel fortunate and, and you probably feel the same way, too, that you're able to enjoy your own content without having to uh, just, you know, cringe the entire time. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. I mean, for me still, when I look at them, I'm like, OK, I would totally do this with a completely different vibe now. But I, I still like am proud of what I did there. Yeah. 
yeah yeah that, that that's, a, that's a big yeah. thing i I'm, I'm curious what how you would answer the question as well too because i feel like this could be oh. a question that that would apply to both of us yeah sure so hmm so my goals for my for my channel is that i've wanted to be a youtuber generally like <clears throat> honestly ever since i was like I guess like seven, eight years old. I wasn't on the internet that much, like at all, really. <laughs> but mm -hmm. I would sometimes look at reviews of toys or something when it came to like Christmas time or something like that, right? And I first wanted to be like a review channel. That was my thing. Me and my dad watched Jang Bricks together a lot of the time, as well as like Transformers reviews and stuff. So I always wanted to be a review channel. Of course, my mom didn't really want me to have a YouTube channel at that age. She was like, yeah, no. So, yeah, fair. Fair enough. Fair. Yeah. Fair yeah. enough. Um, so that kind of took a backseat for a while, but I always wanted to create content in some space. So I'm definitely like in a place I've always wanted to be. That's good. But yeah, and, and definitely. And where where do you see yourself a year from now? Yeah. So so with that kind of context, I'm where do I see myself a year from now? I definitely like to be making consistent uh, consistent income with the channel because I'm treating it as. What I enjoy, but also being using it as viewing it as like my job as well as something I enjoy, right? That's how I really want to go about it, being able to make money from the things I enjoy. Mm. And I want to be able, like I monetize now, but I'm not making a whole ton right now because I'm more <laughs> focusing on the podcast and the actual videos, which I, I also need to kind of step back and reevaluate a bit. But I want to be able to support myself with the channel as well as other things and just continue growing at a steady pace and faster than I have before. Because I seriously fell behind with the speed at which I plan to do things with my channel. Um, so I'd like to kind of make up for that and really put in a lot of effort to go far fast while still putting out good quality content, I'd say. Mm, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a good answer. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. And yeah, so Dom also asks, do you plan on going to Lego conventions this year? Um... <clears throat> I would recommend it. Yeah, I know. I know. That's the thing, hey. Um, I it, it, it is definitely a goal of mine to, to make it out to a Lego convention. I've never been to one before. Um, so that, that would be something that I, would, I think would be really exciting. I've got dreams of, you know, maybe taking and uh, presenting some of the collection that I've got as well to you, uh, either Galador yeah. or Rock Raiders, that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, that that would all would be really nice. the The thing is, um, it, it's a it's kind of a different ballpark up here in Canada. Um, it's the the distances between major metropolitan areas is very vast, um, and uh, I, th there are a few um, uh, events that happen in my city, but I don't know if they're exactly what you would call a Lego convention. Um, so okay. I might, I might need to do a little bit more homework <laughs> on the home front here. Um, I certainly don't plan on jumping on a plane to go anywhere yet. So really? yeah, yeah, that's, okay. that's kind of where I'm at with it too. Yeah. It's, it's like, I don't know if I, if I want to go that much. I, I, I have a, um, a, a real phobia of, uh, mobs, like large crowds of people, um, that, really? yeah, yeah. So that, that keeps me away from certain activities. Like I, it's very, it, it's interesting to say that because, you know, like, well, well, what Slugger, I thought you were a musician. Don't you like play all these like rock shows and yeah. go tour across the province? And yeah, I do. It's a very different experience though. When you're up on the stage and the audience is all the way over there, like that's, that's nice. I like that. That, that, that's yeah. cool. But space, yeah, space, right. I've got my designated space. You don't come up here right onto the stage and I won't go down there into the audience and we're good right uh that to me yeah. is fine but there there have certainly been times in my life where I, I enter into a big room and there's lots of people and all of a sudden it's like ooh, i don't i don't want to be in this room anymore um so yeah I, I don't know if there's a name for that that type of phobia there, there's got to be right you know there's there's probably yeah. there's a phobia for being afraid that a duck is always watching you so i'm sure there's a name for that one <laughs> Perfect, perfect. Yeah, and actually, strangely related, I am afraid that a duck is always going <laughs> to... <Yeah. laughs> oh, man, I finally found one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I see, though. No, I understand that. I will say, though, like, I, I would definitely recommend hopping on a plane to ones, because if there's nothing huge in Canada, the two biggest ones, from my knowledge, are uh, Brick World Chicago and Brick Fair Virginia, the latter of which I did go to last year, which was an awesome experience. Nice. But... 
those are definitely the most acclaimed ones, as well as I think uh, Atlanta BritCon is getting kind of big. But I will say, if you do go to those, which once again, highly recommend, being able to connect with fellow content creators in person is something out of this world cool. But what I would recommend is displaying at these places because you get to hide behind the table. Uh, like first, you get, the, you get the private days, and then you also get to hide behind the table on the public days, which is great. And some places do have, like, private rooms. I'm not sure if all of them do, but some do. Right, so, yeah. right, yeah. It, to me, it's it's definitely one of those um, things where if, if I were to do it, like, you know, buy plane tickets and all that sort of stuff, um, it, it, it would be like a go big or go home sort of thing. Like, I, I'd want to make totally. sure I'm, I've got tables set up and merch and whatever, yeah. you know, like, just, just do, do the whole nine yards for it. Um, so it, it, it's, it's a goal of mine. I hope to one day do it. I don't think it'll happen this year, but, um, okay. yeah, but hopefully, That's hopefully someday. Yeah. Nice. All right. I think we're going to ask one last viewer submitted question sure. and then wrap up, which is by, uh, which is by Alistair Builds. Oh, who asks, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Another, another one. You one. Know, yep. <laughs> who asks, what's the weirdest piece you own? <laughs> Yeah, we asked a few questions, but I felt that was a, that was the best that, one to ask. Yeah, that, that 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 is a good question. The weirdest piece is um, hmm, that's a tough one. The the um, I know the, the, there certainly are a bunch of weird weird pieces, and, and I guess it kind of depends on how you want to define weird as like it, is weird unique? Because if if it's the most unique piece, then it's probably one of those Galador prototype pieces that I have. But that maybe is a yeah. boring answer. Um, I, I think a really weird piece is the uh, Belleville teddy bear piece. It, it, it is Lego. Oh. It's, it's, not, it's not fabric, but it, it, it's the shape. It's a plastic molded shape of a, of a teddy bear. And it doesn't have any connection points on it, like to, to Lego. There's no anti-studs. There's no bar connections. Um, wow. But you can, if you really force it, you can force the feet in to sit in between studs on, on like a base plate. You have to really press it in, but it, it will stand okay. on the studs there. <laughs> so like it's lego in like anything or it, like um it, it's in it's lego in name only basically is what i'm trying to say <laughs> so, yeah, yeah yeah that that's a weird piece that is a really weird piece i think <laughs> nice okay that's a good one i like that yeah how about yourself oh okay that's a good one i do have actually a handful of weird pieces of course they're all leaving my brain now that i actually need to talk <laughs> about them but I know I have, like, a collection of them somewhere. Hmm. Oh, come on. I know. What is this one? Well, I do have some pieces that, like, you know, aren't supposed to be had by a consumer, like some prototype things. Nice, yeah. Or, like, leaked things from a factory that just happened to end up in my possession. I didn't buy them. Don't worry. <laughs> um, but uh, that stuff. It's either something like... I own uh, one Modulex piece. Oh, cool. Modulex is the, the like, mini, mini ones. Yeah, for, yeah. Like, architecture, I, right? yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't have any of that. That's really cool. Yeah, I own one of them, which I was given that at a Lego convention in England, Bricktastic, which was very cool. Wow. Um, but I'd, I'd say that's probably one of them. I feel like, once again, there is probably another one. But for now, that's the first thing that's coming to mind. That's great. Yeah, yeah. Cool yeah. stuff. Definitely. I also have like a, like a, a two by four brick that's like, um, kind of like the milky silver color that is that like uh, Captain Phasma from Star Wars is molded in and that kind of thing. Oh, but, interesting. Yeah, some funky things. Not a whole ton though. But yeah. All right. And for the final question of the show, do you have any advice for T false? Oh. <laughs> What a big question. How am I supposed to answer that? <laughs> feel, feel free to think about it. It, it. It's hard It's hard to give an answer that isn't just life advice, you know, to, 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 to a teenager. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. So I think to, to a teenage fan of Lego, I would say um, a couple of things. So, so in terms of Lego itself... I would encourage you to be creative, take apart your sets, use the pieces in the sets and build something new with them. I think that's something that Lego is inherently geared towards, like it, it's made for that idea. But it is something that I think has become more difficult given the the smaller 
parts that are in uh, Lego sets today and, and the greater variety of molds being used. So I, I encourage nice. teenage fans of Lego to try to uh, combat that by by actually engaging with it. Take, take the sets apart, build cool things with the pieces, find new and exciting ways to use these parts as well because um, the modern molds have so many new connection points, so many new ways that you can build not just studs facing upwards um, that have kind of revolutionized the way that you build with Lego. So I, I, I encourage teenage fans of Lego to engage with that. Um, as people outside of Lego, I really encourage um, teenagers um, far and wide and, and even younger younger folks um, to stay optimistic about things. I, I know there's, there's a lot of different, uh, you know, world things that uh, can, can be seen as, you know, very, very negative or very pessimistic. Um, politics have become very... Um, divided you know politics have become very divided and heated uh it, it, it hasn't always been this way as well that that's another thing to keep in mind and i think teenagers growing up today haven't known any other way that, that the world is but yeah it, it, things things are different now uh in in that sort of sphere and I just want to encourage optimism because like, you know, we, the, the world has been through so much already, you know, we've done all these things. Uh, so the latest crisis is, is maybe not going to be a life ending crisis uh, for, for the world. Right. So just, just keep that in yeah. mind. Every day is supposed to be better than, than yesterday. Um, so yeah, I, I think that that's, that's an important uh, thing to consider. And um, also just, you know, keep in mind that, um, you know, companies and corporations, they're not necessarily your, your best friend. You don't have to jump yeah. in and defend them or, or you know, <laughs> just uh, try to keep that separation between like yourself. Don't think of yourself as a consumer, right? Think of yourself as a person, that, that sort of idea, right? Um, yeah. And it, it can be tough to do that in, in uh, to, to today's world because um, the, the advertising and the marketing is so ingrained into everything that we do online. Um, and, uh, yeah, yeah. So, so, you know, take, take a few steps away from the computer every now and then too. I think that's important. <laughs> and that, that's not necessarily Absolutely. just geared at teenagers. I, th I think we're all guilty of that, <laughs> of sitting in front of a computer yeah. a little bit too much, uh, these days. Definitely. But yeah. Ground yourself in like the physical reality a bit more sometimes. Yeah. I think we all yeah. Need that sometimes. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, I think I, I needed <laughs> I needed to be told that thing about corporations when I was a bit younger because I always thought, oh, Lego's main goal is to make kids happy and then money is a secondary thing. Right. No. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure the designers love doing that, yep. but not the whole company. Yes, yes. That's that's a big thing too. And, and, and that's important to remember um, with, with a lot of these things because I know, I know kids or like all ages, I should say, lots of folks are really into video games and they really obsess over the developer of the video game, right? The, the people who made the video game. But I think right. what, what we do when we do that a lot of the time is we attach that one singular name, whether it's Bioware or Treyarch or whatever, you know, whatever company makes that the game, we attach that name to the game and we treat it as if it's one entity that made it. But those entities are made up with a lot of individuals. And just because that name is attached to an upcoming game doesn't mean that the same people that made the game that you liked previously are even still working for that company, right? So uh, that, that's, right. that's one of the things with like, uh, with uh, Mass Effect, you know, they're, they're rumoring a new Mass Effect game and Bioware is going to work on it. And I have to remind all the folks that tell me this, like all my friends that are excited, I have to say, like, none of the people that worked on, on the Mass Effects 1 through 3 still work at the company. Like, they're all gone. It, it's it's not the same same group of people making the new game. It's the same Things name. Like that change, like, people. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It's the same name on the box, but that's it, right? So uh, I, I think we have to consider that, too, um, with, with, all, with all, you know, corporations and, and Lego as well. Like, like you said that the people designing the sets are not the same people marketing the sets right though those are completely right. separate divisions and um, while the set designers might want to be our friends the uh, marketing team really wants to be our friends right you know? so. yeah they seriously do they want to be your best friend. yeah <laughs> absolutely and like a lot of the say shortcomings in sets or things like that aren't usually the developers fault developers designers faults mm. it's usually a corporate side and the limitations they have to have it's not their choice yeah yeah because if you've seen some of the builds they've done damn if they had full like full agency yeah that would be crazy yeah but yeah it's always a higher entity kind of thing yeah yeah all right well that was fantastic 
thank you so much for coming on the show, Slugger. It was awesome having you. And before we end this episode, do you have any social media or other things like that that you would like to plug? Uh, yeah, thank you so much, Kavi. Uh, the pleasure is all mine, honestly. Um, I, I think just, you know, if, if you're looking for RR Slugger, the best place to find him is on YouTube. Just searching up RR Slugger. I think that's that's where you'll find me. All right, fantastic. Also, real quick, you have contributed music to a remake of a Power Miners game, right? Uh, re- remake of a Rock Raiders game, yeah. Sorry, yeah. Rock Raiders, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I, can't, I can't imagine a world where I re- willingly contributed to, to anything Power Miners. <laughs> For April Fool's. Yeah, there you that. go, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Yep, yeah. yep. So, yeah, I guess I, that's that's a good point too. I I, I do have a Bandcamp uh, site where I host all my music uh, publicly, and it's free to download and free to use in your own uh, videos or projects, that sort of thing. I just make it like as like it's um, open source, basically. That that sort of approach uh, to music. So, uh, ton, tons of Lego inspired music there. If you're interested in finding that as well. Yeah, and you can find his music in the remake of the uh, the. The Rock Raiders game, <laughs> Manic Miners. It's true. It's true. Yeah, that, that, that was kind of a surprise to me. But I, I think that kind of uh, came about in that a lot of folks were already modding my music into the into this, into the game already. So uh, Baraclava just decided, mm-hmm. oh, we'll just add it as an option. <laughs> and we'll put the music That's in right from the, ground, uh, right from the ground up. Yeah. That's amazing. All right. Well, thank you all so much for watching. It means the world, and I hope you enjoyed. Links to some of the things and people we talked about will be in the description as always. New episodes now release once every two weeks on Tuesdays for Tfall Talk Tuesday, and you can find updates, announcements, and more regarding the podcast over on my Twitter or Instagram, both of which are at DoodleBricks. Anyways, that's all for now, and we'll see you all later.